Well, it's not me live in person, but it is me live versus via audio. And I miss you guys all terribly and keep working. Follow Mr. Bryant, you're in good hands. Um, but I thought I'd kind of just say hi and show you this problem. Now it's gonna be a short video because I can't go longer than 10 minutes, okay? So here we go. Now with these optimization problems, what I'm gonna ask is for you to think through a process. And so Mr. Bryant has given you an organizer and you'll notice that there's four key parts. We have the question, we've got the clarify part, the strategize, and then the solve, okay? So first thing, when you look at these word problems, you're gonna ask yourself, what is the question that needs to be answered? So in this problem, the question was, what are the dimensions of the box? That's what you're trying to find. And we do know that a box formula is length times width times height. And so if I were to draw what you guys had in your hands, you had an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, and um, you had to cut out a corner from each side so that it would um, form a box with the greatest volume, okay? And these were squares that you cut out. And so in looking at this then, the thing that I don't know is how long to make the cut. So that will be X. So X will represent then the length of the cut, which if you notice when you folded it up, it turned out to be the height of the box. Okay, now so if X is the height, then I need to define um, the length and the width. Okay, now you notice we have an equation. It's volume equals width times length times height. But the whole goal of optimization, now this is the whole goal, write an equation in terms of one variable. If you can do that, then you use your calculus skills and you get the answer. So how can I write this in terms of one variable? Well, if I look at the length, the length of my piece of paper was 11, but I'm going to be cutting out two pieces and each piece will be length x, so it'd be 11 minus 2x. And for the width, it's kind of the same idea. The width is eight and a half inches, but again, I'm gonna be cutting out two squares. So it's gonna be taking away two x. So if I were to write my equation then, it's gonna be x, which is the height, times 11 minus two x, which is the length, multiplied by eight and a half minus two x, which is the width. So now that I've done that, now the calculus comes into part play. But before I go any further, let's talk about the domain, very important. Now, what is possible for the domain of x, which is cutting you know, my square out? Well, we know that it can't be zero because then you don't have a three-dimensional object, so it has to be greater than zero. But then what is the maximum it has to be? So when I cut, I have to make sure that I still have space. So here on the, the width, I can't cut longer than the width. So the width is eight and a half. So if I divide that by two, that would be 4.25. So any cut I make has to be less than 4.25. Okay, now moving along. We want to find maximum volume. So how do we find maximum? Well, of course, we take the derivative and set it equal to zero. Before I take the derivative, I need to multiply out this polynomial. Now, I've already done the math because there's no way right now with the condition of my brain that I could do this off the fly. So when you multiply this out, if you want to trust me on this, we end up with 12 x squared, oh, nope, don't trust me. See, that's the problem right here. I was doing a different calculation. Where's my eraser? Okay, come on, eraser. Ah, please come. Oh, it won't erase. Darn it, I'm just gonna cross out then, okay? So when I distribute this then, the volume is going to be four x to the third, which makes sense, because it's um, three-dimensional, minus 39 x squared, plus 93.5x. So now I'm gonna take the derivative of that. So the first derivative of volume then would be 12x squared minus 78x plus 93.5, okay? Now to find maximums, we know that for a critical point, we'll set that equal to zero. Now, unfortunately, this quadratic cannot be factored. So, you do have a calculator available to you. So what you would do then with your calculator, you could use the quadratic formula, but oh, that's a lot of work. 
And what we've been really focusing on is looking at the graph of the derivative, right? So you'll notice here on the right side, I have actually graphed this function. And I'll make it a little larger so you can see it. And so here's the graph of the first derivative. And you notice there are two zeros. So x could be, let me get back to pen, x could be either 1.585 or x could be 4.915. Now I hope you're in realizing, no, no, Ms. Kleiber, it cannot be 4.915 because you notice then that would exceed the domain. So there is only one zero, only one value of x that will give us the maximum volume, and that value is 1.585. Okay? So now if I were to finish off this problem, okay, I'm trying to shrink the picture here. There we go. So to finish off this problem now, I'm going to see if we answered the question. So the question was find the dimensions, okay? So if x is height, and that's 1.585, so we know height is 1.585, and that would be inches. And then the length, sorry, my 8 looks a little weird. And then the length, we would go um, 11 minus 2 times that. And the length turns out to be 7.83 inches. And then for the width, we go 8.5 minus 2 times 1.585, which is 5.33 inches. And when we multiply those three, volumes, three dimensions together, the maximum volume we end up with is 66.148 inches cubed. Now, which groups got that right? I'm very interested to know, okay? So in finishing off this protocol, you'll notice then to just kind of check yourself and say, did you answer the question? Yes, we found the three dimensions. Did you use units? Yes, we did. And key is your answer in the domain. Yes, it is. So this is the protocol I'd like you to use initially until you get the feel for these optimization problems. And you're going to be doing lots of practice of these. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye-bye.